Okay, we're live, Bartolucians. You what? You're up and running already? Yep, you're live. Everything's good? Yeah, it's ready. Yeah. Yeah, now watch it with no sound. No sound? How about now? No. They better have sound now because I got my green lights going on and it's happening and we got six and I'm hearing it. Thumbs up and thank you, thank you, thank you and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Happy Oyster Show. I am your host, Bart Burke, and we are here live in the Oyster Cave. Morning, Sk- everybody. Happy Saturday. With Skipper T is in the house and of course, no show without would not be complete without Freddie, the Captain Freddie, the angry Bayman at the helm. In the office at the computer over here. What's the word, Captain Fred? Uh, I'll have to think about it. <laughs> All right. I'll get back to you later. Uh, we got a little boat update coming up on you and whatnot. If you're not familiar with who we are, we stream to you live each and every week coming from the Oyster Cave. Uh, we're in the middle of a career change at 50-something years old, and we are changing and having fun and just enjoying life good morning everybody good morning zip good morning Artie. good morning soundtrack what's going on all right oh before i get going any further our sponsor netminder i was just getting ready to mix up a batch over here come on over let's check it out while i continue to yak it comes available you can bring it over it comes available in a one-gallon jar. It comes in available in a five-gallon jar. And I just opened up this five-gallon jar because I'm going to refill my one-gallon jar because I kind of want to try to keep it as fresh as I possibly can. You know. Ooh. So let's see what she looks like. Now, I just cracked the seal. I opened it up. I did not stick it in. I want to see how thick and zesty it is, see what kind of comes up off the bottom, see how much storage it's going to take for this. It's been sitting... Uh, Alex was here approximately how long ago? Over a month ago. Freddie, look okay in your view over there. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Yeah. yeah Let Alex. me get my sanitized paint stirrer. All right, here we go. All right, yeah, there is some some definite some definite action on there. It's definitely got it's a it's a thickness. It's a thick consistency of like a regular like latex type paint. Uh, coming out of a five-gallon bucket. Uh, I'm going to stick the drill in here and give it a little shot with the drill. Uh, I'm glad I opened it up this way and not via the other way, meaning with the with the screw top. This way I can, I can, uh, I can really uh, mix it up. What does this stuff do, you ask? This stuff, you coat your stuff that needs to get no fouling on it. When I say no fouling, come on outside here for a second. Let me show you what fouling is. Right. This is a little bit later on in the day. We'll be talking about this stuff. Uh, now, what's that? It stopped. It stopped. Well, we, we it should be probably reconnecting, maybe. Our uh, uh, let's just refresh that for a half a second and see what happens when we do that. Oh, there I am. I'm definitely there on that, aren't I? Uh, yeah, it's not like the movement too awful much, so we'll have to be a little bit more set. Did everybody, did we catch, did they catch that? I don't know if they got the biofouler or not because it went dark there. It went dark there? All right, so maybe if we, maybe I got to bring the biofouling to you. Yeah, right. This is live, guys. I mean, you know, you have to deal with it. I'm always going to be sorry. Uh, I'm going to be sorry. Again, our sponsor, Netminder. Uh, Freddie, you're going to have to get some sleep. Uh, you have to get some sleep. Uh, you're going to have to get some sleep. Uh, you're going to have to get some sleep. Uh, you're going to have to get some sleep. Uh, you're going to have to get some sleep. Uh, you're going to have to get some sleep. Uh, you're going to have to get some sleep. Uh, you're going to have to get some sleep. Uh, you're going to have to Give us the other hundred subscribers and we'll have to, we'll do away with this. <laughs> Tell them that, buddy. I just told them. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, they can't hear you from there, though, Fred. Uh, all right. Now, my electric cave gets all stunk up. Yeah, I'm going to be ticked uh, off. You're going to be ticked off. Yeah. I'm clean. I want to get it. This is biofouling at its best. Oh, I can't lift it up very much. There you go. You got it now? Biofouling. That's what would happen if you put shit in the bag. With a net mine. Now, if you coat your stuff with this, it's not going to get like that. 
this has been out in approximately a month-ish, maybe a little less, more like three weeks, maybe. If you can keep it on here, Tony, it's going to be so much better. And that way you, you can look at it while you're doing that and then maybe turn and push yeah. it up and down. That's probably going to be better. Keep your thumb off that. It's a yeah. Wiggly. Yeah. It's all right, though. I don't know why it doesn't have a little better light, though. That's what I don't understand. The light is definitely. Yeah, what happens if you turn that off? What happens? No, that inside. That's worse. That's worse. It's because of all this bright sun here. Maybe we can get it out. Here. Got it out here. That's better, actually. What is? The lights on is a little better. Yeah. Come this way, Kate. There. Now we're cooking. You gotta get in the sun. Though. Get out of that shadow. There you go. Till I call that live, boys. That should be the best yet, Frederick. Yeah. Right? Uh, Better. Okay. Wild fouling. Bing, bing, bing. So now we can maybe turn that around. If you turn that around, Tom, to the other side. Give us a little mix. Back to our net minder. All right. Let's just see what happens. It's not like it's all the way down through the whole thing. Oh, yeah, that's going to clean it up just fine and dandy. Barney might want to know if you can put it on his bike. Uh, I would say you can put it on your bike if you're leaving it in the water. <laughs> Hopefully he's not putting his bike in salt water. Yeah. Would not be a good thing for his bike with salt water. All right, it's going to mix up no problem at all. I'm really I'm really happy with that. That's not a, not a problem at all. i got to undo this somehow. The paint stir for the for the drill. Oh. All right, that thing worked good. I'm not I'm I'm not going to go through all of that and bore you to death, but it's going to mix up fine. One thing that we have found it is not very abrasion resistant. We put it on brand new spanking barrels, um, and it's stuck on there and whatnot. But when I'm pulling them up out of the out of the out of the dock and whatnot, if I rub against it on the dock, like it's heavy, it, it's going to scrape a little bit of it off and whatnot. So you got to be a little bit careful of that. The benefits, I think, far outweigh the, uh, the the problems that we're having. And the only problem is that the abrasion resistance. Netminder stuff, I have made the commitment. Uh, the, the reason I'm mixing this up is I'm going to make the commitment. I'm going to I'm going to do a definitely 10, uh, 10 cages. I got them. I'm starting to line them up right out here. Turn around. I got them. I got them lining up right over here, as you can see. And uh, the. Uh, we're going to start rolling it out and spraying it down to reduce this biofilm. Because what the whole deal is, is whether or not it is getting the right flow. It's all about flow. Oysters want flow. That is the bottom line. Netminder took care of that, took care of that. Boat is dead. Frederick, the boat is dead. Let's go over the boat. No, your boat. <laughs> Our boat. The boat. Back to here for a second to Freddy. There we go. So the boat is dead. I need my coffee. Define dead. Well, again, guys, I am brand spanking new to this whole boating thing. Boat. I got the boat is sleeping. <laughs> I have no experience with outboard motors. I have experience with a sailboat. That's about it. I have experience with life preservers. Uh, I've been on a boat here, there, other friends' boats, but I've never really owned a motor boat because they were just holes that you threw money into, and I am learning that very quickly. Absolutely no problems on that aspect at all. So the boat, when we first put the boat in the water, we had to tow the boat. So now we towed the boat with Freddie's little boat, and it had, what is the thing on it? Uh, yeah, the motor was here. Uh, yeah, the motor was here. That Johnson antique that was on the, his, I don't know what the hell that boat is. It's a little dingy thing. It was a three horsepower motor boat. Threw yeah. boat up. Now, granted, we, we were, had to go 100 yards. Yeah, we weren't going that far. We were, and it was no wind, and it was not a big deal. But it was still, it had to get towed. And it was, whether it's short distance or long distance, you're going to have to know how to tow a boat. 
Now, if you tied the boat, the tow boat or the boat that's being towed wrongly, you might not work because you might not have the leverage that you need. So hence, towing a boat. Okay, so here we go. We got a little bit of a diagram here. This is the big boat is us. This is Freddie the little boat right here. Okay. The reason that ocean, the reason that towing works is because of the scope on the rope. Now, if, 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 okay, I knew. Uh, now, yeah, now yeah, here's what. Yeah, now, okay. not only that though, we also have this right. triangle here that comes off of the back of the boat. Yeah, but that's pushing the boat. No, 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 no. This is pulling it. We're still pulling it. We pulled that. We put the triangle. You actually, you held the rope around the moat outboard. If oh, you want yeah, to get yeah, technical, yeah. to put the rope in the middle where the tension is, has got to be in the middle on the boat that you're towing. It's going to help you out a lot. Right. If you're towing from one side or the other of the boat. You're totally missing the mechanical advantage. The boat swims. Exactly. You're more fighting the steering of push than you are using the boat to pull. You have no control over the boat, period, from the front. Okay. Unless you have a mile of rope, like when they tow a barge or something. That's why a tugboat tows a barge a mile away, because it can keep, because it, it, it'll keep it from swimming like this behind the boat. And a pointed, a barge will tow pretty much straight, but a, a pointed bow boat will swim like a fish behind you, back and forth. Now, hence why we also not necessarily cleated it up on the top, up by the deck. We cleated it down below where there's an eyelet down here when we towed the boat. Okay? Right. 100 yards, done, towing. Again, I'm learning all about this, so I'm sharing it with you guys. If you guys all know this already, you might as well just skip ahead or if you're right. whatever, or wait it out or whatever. All right? It's all brand new to me. So, I find it exciting. <laughs> so now we find out we worked on the boat this that, and the other thing. Now we got to tow the boat a little bit farther, like how five miles. Five, yeah, four or five miles. Four or five miles. And I'm like, oh man, this is going to be exciting. I'm thinking we're going to do this with this little boat. No, holy shit. What an adventure this is going to be. Freddie said, oh no, we got to go borrow somebody's boat, blah, 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 blah. So we got not much bigger of a boat here, boys and girls. What the yeah, hell like horsepower a, like is that? A 14 foot Boston Whaler with a 40 on it. A 14 foot Boston Whaler with a, I have a drawing for it, but we're not towing it now. We're going to push it. Okay. This, I was, I was like, pushing it? You're kidding me. That little boat, we're going to push it. How the hell are you going to do that? Is that you or me? That's you. They know better. Than you. you got a kind of thing? All right, so here we go. Here is our diagram. This is the big boat. This is the little boat. Now, he took two. Now, Freddie's smart at this stuff. It ain't his first rodeo. He took the bow rope from here, from the pushing boat. Now, this boat's going to push it. We put a little seat cushion in between here and here. If I had a, if I was not on a, on a computer, it would be much better with a cell phone. Please subscribe. It would make things so much easier for us. So he took a boat, a, a line, two lines from the bow of the pushing boat and hooked it to here and hooked it to here. Then he took ratchet straps and he hooked it from here all the way back to here. And he did the same thing on here, okay, to up. that side. And tightened this and tightened this. And this kept it on the center of the boat. And this kept our action so that this thing isn't doing all of this. Ingenious, okay. It would have taken me a month of Sundays to figure this out. I would have figured it out sooner or later. But, bang, talk about an instant education in how to push a boat. There it is, man. There's the principles. And, the, 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 and it worked great. The principle is that all you're doing is moving the force of the motor back further, making it rigid, and then you can steer the boat where you want it to go. And we steered that thing right out of there. It took us a while. I mean, it wasn't any speed demon, but it went no problem. We steered, a, no problem. We put, put it, it right in the boat. So that, right into the dock, no problem. Right. Two, he, I was on the front boat. Freddie was on the back. It just worked out like a charm. No drama, nothing, bada bing. Again, a tow versus a push when it comes to a boat. It's kind of cool, right? That's why they push barges in the Mississippi. With push boats. Uh, all right. Toe to that, to that. Applying net minder. We already went over that. We're moving on to oyster drills. Where are we at in terms of time frame? We're right on time. That was just about what I was figuring. About 15 minutes worth of BS and then 15 minutes worth of oyster drill. <coughs> Any questions for anybody? All right. Moving on. 
Oyster drills. Tony Joe's on the home. Got to get the heck out of here. Feather upon Wolf. Yeah, Wolfie's on the house. He wants to, he wants to send me something on Facebook. Oh, you're not really doing Are you banned from Facebook or not? No, I'm back. Oh, okay, good. A quick update. Hey, Tom. Right here. Oh boy. All right, quickie on the update on bubbler. Bubbler update. Here we go, bubbler. We have abandoned the bubbler. Our water, I'm not too keen about our water quality in the creek that we were at. So consequently, we've abandoned the bubbler. We're abandoning our probably gonna abandon the whole land-based upwell because our floating base upweller is up and running and doing really well and uh, with our netminder paint on it. So anyway, this thing here worked pretty well. I would like to try it instead of an ambient water. I would like to try it with a controlled algae food formula. Maybe our flow wasn't, we didn't kill them. They didn't die. They didn't grow great, but they were very uniform in shape because they were constantly being tumbled. Uh, that was one thing that it did do very, very nicely. Uh, other than that, we only used it for about a month, and like I said, we're kind of breaking it down. It started to get bad. All of a sudden, the algae started to hit, and everything started to get nasty, and the water quality, and it just – one thing led to another. So it did turn into chocolate milk. There's some construction in the area, and it's just not right. Uh, they got to get out of there ASAP. Uh, but that's our bubbler update. You can see how she was definitely a little bit got some algae on it. As you can see, the angel hair is starting on that. If we would have coated that with net minder, it would have never happened. We had this filled into here where it was into a separate tray that went into here in case we had an overflow where the seed was going up and over, and it did happen. And then the oysters would be caught in the bottom tray, as you can see. Uh, and then they would settle to the bottom, and then this drained off into another tank so that it was another safety just in case you needed to catch them twice. Whatever. Moving on. It worked. Uh, again, I'd like to try it with uh, a constant flow of algae. That would be really cool. All right, next. Oyster drills. This is a lantern net. This lantern net was hanging this way, and then we flipped it upside down just the other day when I noticed about to show you what I, when I noticed what I am about to show you, I noticed it about two days ago, we turned the thing upside down, and now I brought it over here because I was like, this is going to be great for the live show. It was touching the bar. It was touching the bottom, and that is a key no-no. You're hanging oysters off of your dock. These oysters were runts that came from someplace. I, and they, we just wanted to see what the water quality was going to do and how to, and we knew they were going to grow, but just let's see what would happen. So we weren't going to eat them because they were a little bitty like this, and they overwintered over the dock. It was nice and warm. But now here comes springtime, and these guys were resting on the bottom for not a long period of time. They were in a bag. He transferred them to the lantern net. I forgot that part. These were tra transferred from a burlap, not a burlap, but a... It's very a, funny that they were in there for months on the bottom in the bag, but nothing got on They were in... They, yeah, so, that's what I was going to ask. Bag. Were they on the bottom? Yeah, they were on the bottom in an onion bag. But on the bottom in an onion bag, you know what? piled those, up together. Those snaily things couldn't get through the onion bag to lay eggs on them. Yeah, but they were laying eggs all over the bat. Oh, they're laying eggs all over the outside of the thing. Yeah, but they went right through that lantern net and got on the oysters. Yeah. They didn't. They but they're also them. all over the outside of the lantern. Well, they were on that bag too. But I think it's got something to do with the fact that it was on the bottom. I mean, if it was on the top, I think if it was on the bottom, lantern bag or onion bag, it was the time of the year. The water hit the right time, the right temp. The everything was cool, and it was time to make babies. Springtime is time to make babies, and that's what these little oyster drills did. What is an oyster drill? There it is. Now, this is just not one. There's millions of them out there. Whoa, don't let that fall. I'm gonna, definitely going to have to hose this down to my – she's going to be pissed off. 
It's a little snail. Maybe here. Better? No? I don't know. Now, if you wait a second, it's going to start to come out of its little shell here. I'm holding it upside down. Let me let it sit here for a second on my computer. It's going to get undone in a second. So anyway, this thing was sitting up there like that. It's long. Okay, and it was sitting on the bottom. This is a lantern net. It's got little thingies here. We're going to empty these out and throw them in the fish tub. Now, this is the top of it now. This was the top yesterday, uh, two days ago. That, that we turned it upside down. Uh, these were the top the other day, and these are turned out. These are looking nice, man. These are looking really nice. We're gonna put them in a different tray here. They're ready to eat. I don't want to put them in this this nasty water in here. So we got some, we got a tray here. We'll just pop these out of there. Anything else you guys want to talk about amongst yourselves? Now there's all kinds of things that are living out inside of your bags. Just makes a very nice habitat. For a bunch of little guys, like this little blue claw crab, as you can see. They're a pain in the neck. Can you? How's that? Can you see that? All right. I can't see because of the brightness. All right, well, good. You gotta go back in here. That thing will bite the hell out of you. <laughs> when they get big, they bite the neck. <laughs> they bite. Yeah, they do. Yeah, but when they're little, they, they cut. <laughs> There's something. The, the claws are so pretty. Now that little that little blue claw crab is also a predator inside of here, and it's not doing the right thing. Watch out what you grab. What's that? Watch out what you grab. <laughs> Should I look in here before I go? Oh, there's a whole bunch of snails in this one, and this one's up towards the top. I wouldn't grab it. You wouldn't what? Put your hand in there? No. Fred? Well, I've been bitten by those little crabs. They're vicious. Oh, come on. That one wasn't so bad. All right, here's a whole bunch. Oh, this little guy, already he, he's trying to climb off of here right now. All right, here's a whole bunch of them little things. I'm going to put them inside of here for now. Uh, what are you going to do with those, Bart? Are you going to kill them? Or are you gonna... Well, we're going to have to talk about that in a minute. We're going to talk about what we're doing here with the rest of these oysters as well. We're... While we're here, I hope I'm not boring you guys. Maybe I could just dump it right in there. That's a good try. Yeah. Lantern nets are kind of a pain. They're, they're nice for gardening and whatnot, but for commercial purposes, it could be a problem. Oh, that's the way. They had to come out of here, guys. Oh, wow. Which ones are those? These are runts that came out of that. Runts? Runts that came out of that bag that we got. And they were, we kind of skimmed through all the runts, and we took all the big ones. And then we took, wow. the, we took the bag of runts and threw them out on, the, on Freddy's dock. That's where these came from. Mm. So we got a bunch of seaweed here on the bottom and whatnot. I think that's all of them. Let me just double check. Notice how after the, all the dirty work is done, everybody comes out over and checks it out. I just I want you to notice. I finished my phone call, so I didn't Uh-huh, a phone call. All right, they're I all gone. Mind. They're I all out of business. Oh, that's all right, Tone. I understand. Yeah. Pull that mm -hmm. blue rope out of there. Who's, yeah. The blue underneath. Thanks. you got to eat these things. 
They're getting too big. All right. So big. I said to Fred the other day, I said, Fred, we got to uh, – let's pull that lantern net up and let's seaweed, check that out. That seaweed salad. Right. No, it's not edible. I don't think that kind is edible. Cooks would eat anything. Hey. <laughs> Um, all right, what was I looking for? A scraper. Look at the growth on this thing. It's got a quarter show, of an inch. Yeah, show them the, show it's got a quarter. The it's got a quarter. This one's got a quarter of an inch of growth on it. And that's from this this spring. How are you saying that? This yeah. spring. That's from this spring's uh, this spring. It's a quarter of an inch of growth. Now let me scrape these eggs off of here. These are all eggs. These whole things infested. <laughs> With oh. uh, snail dri snail eggs, this yeah, whole thing. Did you already address that? We're we're yeah, working on it right the, now. The, 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 since okay. we since we put them in there, they got a lot of growth on them, man. And so, how long ago was that? They've been in there since Bart was working for what's his name. That was what three months, four months ago, three months ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. And well, these were these were runs that came from him. Wow. They, they were runs. They were little. They were runs. little things. And there's your there's your wow. there's your there's your there's your growth from here. So now the now. tumbler, the tumbler, what that's going to do is it's going to you want to cr you want to crush that, okay? The tumbler is going to take care of that, and what that's going to do is then it's going to build up the cup. Now this isn't too bad, but they are dirty, they are nasty. They got all these little sea eggs all over, them. and it's got you know every one of them's got a bunch of them on there, and it's a sea drip. It's a it's a sea drip. Now here's one that's got some boring sponge going on to it. You can see the boring sponge from that. Now remember, these have been these are probably two, three years old. These guys, they didn't grow very fast. Yeah, but they're nice now, boy. Yeah. These little worms right here, these little white things, these little white worms. Freddie calls it the death coral. It's a, that I have scraped oodles of oysters. <laughs> the more with that with that death coral stuff and scraping it off of that, uh, and and, and they, they get on both sides, and you know. Uh, I don't want to go too crazy in here. I'm going to get a brush and clean them off. Uh, we should get rid of now. What happens if this ever happened on your boat or in your farm or whatnot? You're screwed. Uh, oh, boy. You got a situation on top of your hands that you're going to have to want to address. And I'm not, you got to stay on top of your oysters to see what the hell's going on. We did not stay on top of these. Things got away from us very, very quickly, especially in the springtime, and it got all over. As you can see, just tune that in. My hands are nasty, too. Yeah. Put that in on there a little bit. Now, here we have set all over the net. They like the Velcro. They did. They like, you know, the whole everything. It's, this thing is infested. So if you had this out on your own farm somewhere, you would really be in trouble. Uh, but you can see them all in here. Look at them all. Look at them all. Tons of them. And they were able to, they were able to get through this mesh. If they, were big, if they were bigger, they wouldn't be able to. But uh, what do you do about it? All right, back up. Number one, power wash. Clean them off. Number two, you ought to be holding on. Back up, back up over that way somewhere. I got to get my hands right. You ought to, you know, our drain holes on our boat, you know, yeah, you're stripping them off, and then it goes on the floor, and then you spray the drain hole, and it goes out the side of the boat, and it goes all over, and now it's going on to your farm again, and you're, you're now you're populating all of those guys and whatnot. So that's no good either. So, you know, you ought to plug off your drain with some sort of a screen that's going to catch it and try to scoop up all of that and put it into a bucket and get it off of your farm. All of those scrapings and whatnot, if that was on the boat and then you're going to hose all of that off and into the drink, you're not doing any good. Uh, Don't give the DUC any ideas. Well, <laughs> if it happens on my farm and I'm such and I've got that situation, number one, I've heard that the the seed drills do not like to crawl over copper. So a preventative measure might be to put copper pipe along the bottom of our. It could be expensive. Um, what don't seagulls like to go wall. over? What's that? What don't seagulls like to go over? Monofilament line. That's for bird to turn. Birds. Oh, to okay. Keep the birds All right. Off gotcha. All right. right. That's yeah. a whole different. That was a whole subject. What did I do with my coffee? The coffee is here. Thanks. Hey. Yeah. 
Uh, so what was I saying? Oh, so collecting them up and throwing them into a bucket and getting them off of your site. They are an invasive species. They do like oysters. Another idea that I've heard of a way to get rid of oyster drills or to control them is to plant cement blocks. Cement blocks, barnacles seem to love cement blocks. And the, the seed drills, the oyster drill, will go to a barnacle before it will go to an oyster because the barnacle is an easier meal. It's a much not easier shell to get through. The oyster drill actually goes on top of the snail. It goes on top, and it draw, it's got a little thing in there, and it does one of these. And it starts to eat, 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 and then it makes a funnel-shaped hole. Funnel -shaped hole. They put its little suction cup over the top of it, and then they pump it in with hydrochloric acid, believe it or not. Uh, it's a, they call it an enzyme. But bottom line, it's an acid, guys. I want to say that acid eats a hole through the shell. No. They have an actual rasp. It's called a rasler or something okay. to that. If you click on the link below, it has a little tongue-type little thing, and it just goes right in there. And it gives a funnel-shaped, so that it gives a funnel for the amazing, amazing creature, what it can do. And it pours this acid in there. It just solidifies the oyster, and the snail just <laughs> sucks it right up, and that's that. Uh, evidence of a dead oyster will have a hole, a perfect size hole right through. Uh, oyster drill. Not good, okay? Uh, not good. It will kill the oyster. I don't know how quickly or how long. I don't know. Uh, but I didn't know what it was at first. I texted my buddy Kim Tietro over at Cornell Cooperative. Uh, thank you so much to have those types of uh, people on board that are on our team. Uh, he got right back to me. He says, that's Oyster Drill, Bart. I did a little bit of research, and yep, so on the whole, it was Oyster Drill. Uh, he says, you got to get them off the bottom. Drill. Got to get them off the bottom. Conks are worse. Well, conks are worse. Conks are worse. Conks eat a bushel of plants. One conk eats a bushel of plants a year. There are... That's true. A whelk conk. I don't know if conk eat oysters, but the conk do they eat do. clams, and yeah. they'll eat you know. But whelk is another, which is all in that same type of snail type of family type of thing. Uh, I guess what would you call it? An order? The order species order? Conk smother them in it. So anyway, the where was I? Snail. Drill, oyster drill, drill. Oyster drill. Oh, a preventative maintenance. What to do with it? So barnacles could be a possibility, like put something on there. Keep your cage. The biggest thing is keep your cages clean. Keep your stuff clean. Keep after your stuff. Keep attentive to your stuff. Know what you have. Know your inventory, boys and girls. If you know your inventory, you're going to be okay. Uh, and take observations and take notes of your inventory. Those, conks, those cages will come up with conks on top of them. <laughs> trying to get in there. Yeah. So now the next thing is a cage. They do make oyster drill traps. Now they're not a sellable thing, but they're out there and you can put them in there. And I guess you bait them with something, I guess oysters. Defended Would that make trap, sense? Yeah. And they come in there and uh, they go do their thing and they're all, it's a party central. And then you can take that trap off the site. Oyster drills. It could desecrate a farm, decimate. decimate a farm relatively quickly. Uh, so oyster drills are no go. We got a boatload of them. Probably Just with any the farm, agra, agra or aqua is being aware of what your species are that can ruin your crop in preventive measures. <laughs> yeah, mandatory. Oh, they had weight uh, uh, boat cleaning. I've heard of that. Where they had invasive algae species that came in via different boats to oh, different bet. lakes. Uh, been, oh yeah, you know. So you, you know, we got to keep control of this stuff. Uh, yeah, the world is flat, wet and flat. All right. So biofouling. Did I cover everything? Did I cover the seed drill, the oyster drill, pretty good? Yeah. We're up. We're, we beat up our time. Uh, Alabama Cooperative Extension and Alabama and Mississippi Sea Grant. They're in the links below. You might want to check out some of their stuff in regarding oyster drill, uh, concrete blocks, barnacles, easier meal, uh, traps. Uh, you know, when you do put traps in the water, it's something else that you're going to have to tend to. It's another another apparatus that you're going to have to deal with. Uh you know, this farming thing, it sounds all easy and everything, but boy, oh boy, they keep throwing you curveballs. There is not easy. There's nothing Honestly, easy about this. Nothing easy about farming all right? at all. But I'm having a blast. I don't know about you guys, but I'm having fun. Uh, I haven't had so much fun in all my life. I should have started this 10 years ago. Uh, 
Skipper T is in the house. Yeah, Skipper okay. T. Okay. T. Well, one moment, Skipper T. We're getting ready to round it up. Hey, everybody. You got anything Thanks news? You got any news for us for anything on anything on your side there? Nope. No news. Okay. No news. No, no news. news. How about Oyster Tracker? Where are we at with those guys? Have we talked to them yet? We're going to get ready to talk to Oyster Tracker. Yeah, this week. Um, we got to get worried about where we're, I'm where again, keeping track of your inventory and what you're doing and where it is and how you all of that kind of good stuff. <laughs> Captain Freddie, the angry Bayman in the house. You got anything else for us today? Anything news, any boat news, maybe even do a live stream right from the boat. Wouldn't that be exciting? Uh, we're coming up. We're right around uh, 925 subscribers. So if you could please tell your friends to subscribe or you subscribe or whatever, please subscribe. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Don't cost you nothing. Yeah, that's right. It's free. So, you know, please come on. And remember, the person gets, the per when we hit a thousand, that person gets a moth, moth killer t-shirt. Well, we got to have a drawing we'll for drawing, the moth yeah. killer t-shirt, we'll right? We'll have, Not the actual first thousand. First meet moth. Will the Moth Killer down. Ambassador it? Will the Moth Slayer, I'll have you know. <laughs> I think it's yeah, that's a better word. That's a better name. <laughs> Ambassador Will the Moth Slayer, yeah. Uh, last week we had Will, uh, Will post on. That was a, boy, what, you want to see pure energy? That kid is pure energy. Uh, check it out last week's show. Uncontrollable energy. Frederick, Later. thank you so much for giving the education this week on towing versus uh, pushing and, and whatnot. I really learned a lot. I appreciate that. If I didn't have Captain Angry Freddie, ba the Captain Angry Freddie Bayman, uh, we wouldn't be nothing. So special shout out to Freddie. Thank you, Freddie. <laughs> Be over the marsh on the beach. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you. It won't start. I'll see you later. So anyway, I, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. We wouldn't have half as much fun if it wasn't for all of you guys. You guys are what makes us buzz, and you guys are what makes us click. So thank you all so much for tuning in and spending your Sunday, Saturday morning with us, or whatever it may be. Uh, if you could please come over to our Instagram and or our YouTube and sign up Facebook and uh, no, no Facebook sign up and follow uh, I would appreciate thank you so much again we'll see you next week 10 a.m. New York time I want you guys to be cool I want you to be kind I want you to be happy and of course eat me guys we'll see you next week thumbs up